Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we are revisiting the Octane because uh, I do have an upgrade for it. So we can have a look at the monitor here and see what we have in hardware right now. And then we're gonna upgrade it a little bit and check again. So we can see our system here, IP30. This is our Octane here and we can see our processors. We got uh, two of them at 300 MHz. But the thing we're interested, interested in is at the bottom here, which is the graphics. We've got two graphics cards, they're called the SI, bottom of the barrel kind of graphics. They are 3D capable, but they only have uh, rasterization support, so they can do open yield uh, 1.1 uh, uh, with textures in software, but uh, not hardware accelerated. So there's something called SI Plus T, it stands for texturing, more or less. And that's a separate module, so I actually bought one of those modules with, with the help of some friends. So the plan is to upgrade one of these cards, the primary one. And that will give us uh, hardware texture support and a lot more performance. So I guess the next step is actually just to take the machine apart, getting the graphics cards out of the machine so we can actually put in uh, the upgrade. I'm gonna remove the graphics card assembly at the back here. I'm just going to move my adapter here. So we got two graphics cards on the system. Uh, the one I'm using right now is the primary. So if you have one basic adapter, it's going to go here. And then I have an identity one going here, because this was originally uh, like a dual display machine. It was called a CAD Duo, so I had a piece of cage here that was broken sadly, but uh, allowing for a second keyboard and mouse controller card. So I removed that so it will boot. So we're only really going to use one graphics card of these two. So I pull this out here. These things have very sensitive IBM compression connectors. So you can actually see the first graphics card coming out here. So that's the old assembly. I've got the very sensitive connectors at the back. And the second card on the other side. So I'm going to put this on our desk and we're going to install the upgrade to one of these cards. This is uh, the assembly for the graphics cards. So we got one card here and this is a second display card. So it doesn't give any output when I boot it seems. And I'm not going to use it because I'm only going to use one display. But it is identical to the one on the other side. And here we have the IBM connector compression fittings. Uh, never touch those because the, you can't touch them, you can't clean them really. And you can't buy them it seems either. So we're just gonna upgrade one of these basic cards. So like I said this graphics card can do 3D acceleration but it can't do hardware, three, hardware texturing acceleration. So if you compare it to a Voodoo 1 that, uh, or a Voodoo 2 where you would have like a frame buffer chip and some frame buffer RAM, this is essentially what we have here. Uh, not this chip's problem, but under the heat sink here. So this board by itself uh, would be like a would one you could almost say without the texture, the TMU enabled. So this module is both texture RAM. So we got four chips here, and uh, we got one in the middle, which is the I'm guessing is the texture mapping unit TMU. So the four chips around it are uh, RAM bus memories. I can't find exact specs, I've been googling the model number of them because there is a picture of one of these without the heatsink online. But they're supposed to be apparently a RAM, RAM bus. So they consider this like a texture cache more than RAM because, uh, yeah, and it's four megabytes. I got these connectors here. And I've got a screw over here that we need to remove so we can secure it later. It says that we cannot use a steel screw. I don't know why this should touch, but it's anodized. But we're gonna follow the instructions. So I will be removing this screw here. Yep, so inside of here is uh, like uh, some capital type I want to look like, and there's some film here. So that's probably why they use a nylon screw, so this cannot be grounded. So yeah, you shouldn't secure one of these with a metal screw because there are instructions for these, you can Google them. So you're supposed to slide underneath here. 
Now basically look from the side and make sure we're aligned. I think I'm aligned there. It seems to slide down there. Yeah, I think that's secure. So now we need to add the screw here. So that's one uh, SI graphics card upgraded. So like I said, it's very basic. It's the slowest of the model. But with this tier, I'm now we're gonna go from probably single digit uh, frame rates with textures to multiple frame rate frames. So you should be able to pay like Quake 1, probably Quake 2 on it. I have no idea about Quake 3 because I've never used an SGI machine with any game or anything. I haven't used uh, IRIX at all really. Just booted it in my previous video. So I don't know what to expect. I've seen some benchmarks, so I can go from there, but so it should be playable like Quake 1 and 2. Uh, me and my friends are pretty good at tweaking the config files of Quake uh, 2 and 3, especially 3, so I think we could manage to get that to run. This module costs about $100, uh, cost exactly, I think, $100, and then uh, just as much in shipping and import. So my two of my friends helped out paying about half of that, so, because they won't see Quake running on it. So thanks to them, we could do this. I would uh, not be able to afford it otherwise. So we have two identical graphics cards, but one has now a, a TMU. So let's put this back into the system again. And then I need to put IRX on the system, and then we can actually try something, hopefully. Probably gonna be a few days for me figuring stuff out though. I can now see here that we have two SI cards, but the first one has uh, the texture option. So the, it's detected. And hopefully it works. While we are watching IRX install, I just want to shout out Silicon Graphic User Group and Virtual Fun on Discord. They were a big help getting this thing sorted, and if you want to find out more about SGI or Alpha machines, I would recommend both Discord servers. You can find links to their Discord server and also our Discord server in the description down below. This is IRX and uh, I configure it to look like I wanted to. So this is about uh, almost two weeks uh, later. It took me some time to get stuff up and running because it's very unfamiliar to me. So this is Quake 1 running 640 by 480 and we're running a window. We could run full screen which would be ideal but that would result in uh, native resolution being 1280 by 1024. And that's like 4 frames per second. It's not like a PC where you could just say 320 by 240 or 640 by 480 in uh, full screen. Uh, th these uh, graphics cards and uh, operating system are designed mainly to run at very high resolutions for that time. So we're not gonna... We can run full screen but that would uh, entail at minimum I think 1024 by 768 and it's still very low frame rate. That's why we're running in a window here, and this is like a basically a team throughout when you're trying to run games on IRX here. So your best option would be a much faster graphics card out of the V Pro series. We're running the early impact here that came out in 95 on the machine that precedes this. So we're gonna run a time demo here. Uh, so this card is basically a year older, technically, the chipset than the Wood One. This kind of gives you an idea of the time period. The machine is newer, but uh, the Octane is from 97, but it did use the impact from the previous line. So with the, with the Octane, they also introduced the V-Pro, which I wish I, that I wish I had, then we wouldn't have 23.3 FPS, but it is what it is. But at least with the team RAM module is working, so we can actually, actually play something, we can use demos that are textured. So here I started up Quake 2. Uh, it runs pretty well, but still not like what you want for modern uh, frame rates. So I started up a single play game here just to show off the performance. So in some situations it's pretty fine, but if you look at the broken pillar there, that's usually where we lose frames. So I'm gonna try and just show off full screen here because I can actually swap over to that in this game, in the game. So this is full screen 640 by 480, which just ends up in a corner. So that's a problem. Some games do put the game in the middle with black borders. 
So now we're going to go native resolution here, and then we're going to have actual full screen. But uh, as you will see, the performance will not be great. I don't know about the frame rate, but I'm guessing like four frames maybe. It's uh, quality wise, nothing to complain about. But yeah, I have to put into perspective that this card was developed and came out some, uh, somewhere around 95 for the early machine and then was ported forward that ships it to the Octane. So this is a time demo of Quake 2. I think I uh, messed up the, uh, the beginning of the time demo a little bit. It's gonna run a little bit slower, but we'll see here. So I had fiddled around a little bit with the texture uh, the solution stuff, it doesn't really seem to impact performance. It's probably because uh, of the very fast X bone. So we've got the uh, 18.9, my best is 19.9. So the X bone is basically a bus, it's so equivalent to PCI bus, you could say, but I think it's like a one gigabyte per second. So we're running Quake 3 here, and now we're running, we could run uh, the highest texture resolution we want. Uh, if you did that on a Bully 2 with similar amount of TRAM, texture RAM, 4 megabytes, it would uh, slow down quite a lot. But uh, because we have RAM bus memory, it seems, on the card, I checked, and uh, we have this fast interface, the texture, texture performance isn't that big of a deal, it seems, I haven't run into an issue with that, even if it's just 4 megabytes, because it seems to do texture swapping pretty fast. But the performance isn't great, because um, we have limited uh, Geometry performance. Uh, there is a card that takes two TRM modules and has double the geometry ships. So, and we com I compared a little bit to use a similar machine with that card. And this is about twice as fast on graphics, so it makes sense. So, we, we basically can only render so many polygons. That uh, seems to be our main limitation. But I mean, from a novelty standpoint, this is kind of playable and uh, yeah another game that's a favorite of mine is open ttd and uh, yeah it runs very well on this machine actually as you can see so you can look up at the right corner top right corner there we have cpu bars cpu 1 and 2 and we can see that cpu first cpu is working very hard i'm gonna generate a map now and i'll see the second cpu here it's gonna spike so the game is kind of multi-threaded and the reason for that is actually that the MIDI is emulated, so it's a MIDI to wave conversion in real time. It's using a library for that in game, a way to portrait. And uh, you could technically do uh, hardware MIDI with an external box through serial, which is the way it seems, it seems you want to do it, the SGI. But I don't have that. So I turned the music off and you can see the CPU 1 there, the first one, or CPU 0 is actually called. I'll drop down to like nothing, and the game runs on the second CPU. So that's pretty cool that the game can actually use both uh, CPUs. And if I have to, why not? It's cheaper that way now than uh, trying to buy an external MIDI box because I don't have one, an external synthesizer. But it would be pretty cool. So yeah, I did a little bit of playing. And like I said, the game runs very well, it's very smooth. If you zoom out all the way, it's kind of choppy, but uh, that's not uncommon on older systems. XChat does exist for this uh, machine, so you can go to IRC here. So I went to the Silicon Graphic Group and said hello to the Discord bot. And we've got something called Soft Windows 95. It's basically a virtual machine with Windows 95. It's a, it's a team among risk machines. I got some similar software on my Power Mac E4. But it's pretty fun just to play around with. I haven't installed any games yet or anything like that. It's pretty slow. The, the sound is really good on it usually. And uh, But this does freeze up. It's, it, uh, does free, freeze up at times, which is a bit annoying, like it's stuttering. But anyway, it emulates a Pentium MMX apparently, but it performs more like a mid to high end uh, 486. So we're just running Wintune 97 here, virtualize it obviously. So the score is gonna be like the emulated performance. But it's just for fun, just to see what 
what kind of like emulation performance we have. So integer, about 80 megahertz, I would say, 486. And on the floating point, around 150 megahertz, 486. And a 46 is about half the performance of Pentium clock for clock. So video performance, uh, yeah. Memory performance, from my experience, tends to be a lot higher, uh, even in the VM compared to the native 486 or whatever hardware piece of hardware. I see the same thing on my like my alpha machine. And then we have Blender, it's uh, version 2.49. So I figured, why not? The, these machines were used for things like this. And we can actually test the SMP performance. So I got two threads enabled. So we're rendering a cube here. It's probably the slowest cube I've seen rendered on the dual machine, but my second slowest is dual Pension 3 1 GHz. So not really fair. But yeah, and this is. Uh, the file 3D file manager, if you remember Jurassic Park, this is the actual software they used. I did run IRIX machines inside, like in the movie. Not just, I didn't just use them to render the movie, but I also used them in the movie for the different sets. So this is when she, I think she locks down the whole place, doors and everything. I know this, it's a Unix system. So yeah, this is the software, and I don't think it uses any 3D acceleration. I did go back and watch the movie, and it's like one, two frames per second, so... This is a little bit choppy, but the, the movie is even worse because they're using much earlier machines. And I did uh, port over a couple of my demos. So this is my Steam Engine demo, I just wanted to see uh, and how it ran. It runs kind of crap, uh, to be honest. We did uh, compare to a similar machine, but with the faster graphics card, and it was oh, about twice as fast. Yeah, so, also how we kind of concluded what the bottlenecks were on the graphics side of things. So it's probably running as fast as it can. So yeah, another demo from SGI here. So I think this is it for this time. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members' private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels, where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.